my channel. My name's Melina. This is another episode of Why Not. It is officially Halloween season. I'm talking. We are full-fledged fall, people. I mean, it's no longer faking it. We are totally in. So with that being said, I am taking full advantage and going full Halloween themed. I'm not sure what's happening with what I'm doing with my makeup and whatnot, but just go with it. It'll be fine. So usually at this point, I would introduce to you what wine I'm drinking, but today I'm not drinking wine. Today I decided to veer off my natural vino path and take do something a little more Halloween-y. Um, I wanted to venture into another liquor, another spirit, if you will. That spirit being whiskey. So I decided to take a little bit of apple cider, add a little bit of whiskey, wild turkey whiskey, a dash of cinnamon, and you've got yourself an apple cider apple toddy. What did I just say? <sighs> Listen, I've already had a couple of these. I had to get myself going before we actually got going, if you know what I mean, cheers. So today we were talking all about ghosts and hauntings. Um, something that I am very interested in and love to talk about. Um, I've been super excited to film this video because not only am I super interested in ghosts and hauntings and all of that, but I've also had my own personal encounter with a spirit as well. So we'll get to that later. Um, I'll explain my personal stuff in a bit, but before that I figure I'd warm you guys up with some shit that you probably already know about, shit you've heard about, shit that's been famous, hauntings that have been in movies, just a couple here and there, you know, just to throw out, she'll warm me up, get you going, so let's get started. Okay, let's start small. Let's start with the urban myth, Bloody Mary. Do any of you actually know where that came from? Because I never knew until I did the research on it. Um, we used to play this game all the time. Actually, I don't even know if we actually fucking did it. We always talked about doing it. We got too scared, never did it. So is it real? I don't know. I can't prove it because I don't think I've ever actually done it. Woo! Anyways. So Bloody Mary is based on the story of Queen Mary I of England. Um, she's called Bloody Mary for a couple different reasons, but basically Queen Mary the first as a child had a really fucked up Growing up situation her dad hated her wish she would have been a boy so he could have been king blah 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 Treated her like shit. So she kind of had a lot of issues. So being that she grew up so fucked up When she got into her first relationship, she was still pretty fucked up. So she got into a relationship um, married God knows who I don't know what the fuck his name is he realized he didn't want to be with her anymore, although he was still king, so he had no choice. Um, she thought she was pregnant. So of course, the whole town, public, whatever, went crazy. The queen's pregnant, yay. Um, then there started to come about some rumors. People got, got a little skeptical, thinking, you know what, maybe she's actually not pregnant. So she was supposed to give birth in May, so in April, they pretty much like quarantined her, that, that's not the right word, <laughs> confined her. She's, <laughs> she's not contagious. You're not gonna give birth just by looking at her, okay? Breathe in the same air, you're about to have a baby. <laughs> so they confined her to a room three weeks before her birth or her due date in May. And the due date came, she never had the baby. A few weeks later passed, she never had the baby. She was confined in that room going crazy until the end of July until finally they were like, you know what, false pregnancy, you're not having the baby. So she leaves three months later after being confined to a room for three fucking months, she leaves, leaving the room even more effed up than she was going into it. And she was pretty effed up at the beginning before that. Anyways, at this point, England had pretty much uh, separated into two separate groups, the Catholics and the Protestants. And it was a pretty heavy like split down the middle. Well, Bloody Mary got fucking crazy and decided she wanted one true religion for all, huh, Hitler, hello, and pretty much butchered and massacred 240 men and 60 women, just fucking burned about the stake because they were Protestants. So the urban legend comes from Bloody Mary, Queen Mary of England. Um, they say if you say her name three times in the mirror, she'll arrive with a bloody baby or she'll steal your baby, which Makes sense? So let's move on to something that's actually real, shall we? Okay, so the next one are the hauntings at Stanley Hotel. So you guys all might know the Stanley Hotel being the hotel from The Shining. So there's a little background story behind that. So the Stanley Hotel opened in 1909. Um, in 1974, Stephen King actually stayed there with his wife. They went there for a little rendezvous. Um, not realizing that it was the end of whatever busy season it was. So they ended up being the only ones staying at this hotel. 
Well, since they were the only ones staying there, a lot of creepy shit kind of went down. He was having weird dreams, shit was moving, just a lot of like creepy shit happened. And that's basically how he got the, the idea to write The Shining was because of this crazy Stanley Hotel. So the Stanley Hotel is actually said to be one of the most haunted hotels in the country. I mean, it's been on multiple TV shows. It's uh, been visited by multiple different ghost hunters. Um, there's just a lot of different things that happen to visitors that actually go and stay because you can actually go and stay and you can request uh, the different rooms that have the most uh, activity and whatnot. There'll be mysterious figures on the staircase. Guests have reported that their clothes have been folded and packed away in their suitcases. Um, the piano will just start randomly playing. People have said they can hear children running up and down the hallways laughing, furniture moving, nightstands moving, just all types of stuff like that. So th there's, there's said to be multiple different spirits that live in the Stanley Hotel. Um, it's not just haunted by one spirit, there's multiple. But um, the one story that I did find interesting was um, one of the ghosts is said to be from the chambermaid who apparently um, walked into a room with a candle lit and uh, there was a gas leak. And so when she walked in the room with the candle lit, obviously it exploded. She fell through the bottom of the floor into the, the room below her. It didn't actually die, but the Stanleys who opened the hotel took such good care of her and kind of kept them by her side that she pretty much stayed with them for the rest of her life and pretty much just died in the hotel. They say that she's the one who folds guest clothes and packs them away in their suitcases, so. Can you imagine if you, Let, let's unpack that, shall we? Let, let's unpack that, literally. Uh, can you imagine if you came home from the bar or if you came home from dinner or not out, and you know you left all your, like you know, and your shit was folded in your motherfucking, but I will say this, um, the staff there all report that they're friendly ghosts. So obviously The Shining portrays way more of an evil entity and way more of like a scary feel, but obviously it's a movie um, and Stephen King is Stephen King. But the staff reports that they're all friendly spirits, no negativity, no evil. So, I mean, that's good at least. Okay, I saved the best one for last, AKA this one scares the shit out of me. So uh, this next one is the story of the Bell Witch. So the Bell Witch is supposed to be what was the inspiration for the Blair Witch Project. Another reason why the Bell Witch is such a scary story to me is because it's said to be the only like haunting story where a actual ghost has killed a human being, so. In 1817, John Bell was tending his corn crops and he was just hoeing away and saw a really strange creature sitting in the middle of the cornfield. Apparently it had the body of a dog and the head of a rabbit and so he freaked out naturally and tried to shoot the fucking thing and it got away. Later that night, him and his family were in their house, I mean it's 1817, they're in like a little log house. The bells heard beating on their outside walls, like it was just somebody was beating on their walls. The sounds continued to get more frequent and more intense as um, days went by. Every time they'd go outside to check and see who was out there, there was nobody out there, just beating on the sides of their house. Um, shit got a little more crazy after that. The children started to complain that their sheets would be ripped off of them in the middle of the night, uh, their pillows being tossed on the ground, and then they all started to hear faint whispering and faint voices and oh ew I'm getting the goosebumps even thinking about it. it scares the fuck out of me this is not cool the beating on the house in and of itself oh oh okay that is just too much whispering noise the instant you hear voices like it's like am I schizophrenic am I hearing something you never know but then shit got real so daughter Betsy, uh, she started to experience very brutal, pretty much attacks uh, from the Bell Witch. So um, she complained of her pulling her hair and slapping her in the face. So eventually these faint whispers and voices, they started to turn into yells, if you can believe it. Uh, they're no longer whispers, they're full on screeches, full on yells. Basically, um, what I read was this witch pretty much traumatized this family for years. If we can back up for one second right there, 
how how did they let this happen for years like at what point is it enough at what point are you like you know what I'm done with this I'm done sharing a space with an entity that I can't see like what I would like to think a time or two five fucking tops five tops and I'm out that bitch years <laughs> no Obviously, they stayed. Miss Bell Witch didn't want them to stay. Clearly, one day Mr. Bell was having trouble swallowing, his throat felt swollen, and boom, he fucking dies. But what is said, as Mr. Bell was dying, you could hear the faint laughs of the witch as he passed away. So, the story is told that the Bell Witch is the one who poisoned him. So, I mean... So those are the top three famous hauntings that I kind of wanted to share with you guys that I think are the most kind of like fun and interesting. The thing about those is those are all word of mouth. Those are, those are all stories that are passed down from year to year, generation to generation. And we kind of just got to go off what the urban myth is. Um, things are about to get a little, little more real. So I'm excited to share these next stories because these have either happened to me personally or people that I am very close with. So, at this point, you might think I'm a little crazy, and honestly, I'm a little nuts. So there is that. I am pretty fucking sure what I saw was real, only because I didn't know it was happening at the time and had to be told later that what I experienced was what I experienced. I'll get to that later. Okay, so my story starts at one of my childhood friends, Bree's house. We went there for a birthday party. So a little bit of a backstory. Um, she lives in an old schoolhouse. The perishing schoolhouse, and it was built in 1889. It was then turned into an apartment building, but after a while it turned into something vacant. It was vandalized. It was just like nothing. It was nothing. So Bree's family found it in 1997, I believe, and they fixed it up, renovated it, decided to turn it into their home. So Bree's sleepover. We have the whole birthday party during the day. Everything's cool. Um, it's time to go to bed. And we're all, you know, partying, having fun in Bree's bedroom. And one of our other friends is being a little bitch baby. Tyler, that was you. Um, and she wanted to go to bed. So my sister volunteered to go to bed with her across the hallway from where Bree's room was. So let me give you a little bit of a layout. It was Bree's room, the bathroom, and then the other room where Tyler and my sister were sleeping. Tyler's in bed, sleeping or whatever. The other girls are sleeping whatever at some point in the morning I don't know when it was we were in elementary school I believe so I mean we were like young as hell and my sister and I were on the floor across the hall from each other talking to each other pretty much saying goodnight because we're also little bitches and can't can't not say goodnight to each other so we were just laying on the floor talking to each other from across the hallway when what we thought was her aunt came running out of the bathroom laughing and so it was like late it was like two three and the reason why we thought it was her aunt was because we had seen her aunt earlier that day at Bree's birthday party she had super long dark black hair and honestly I can't even I don't even remember and I can't exactly describe to you what she actually looked like but the next morning we were all talking whatever Alicia her mom was talking to us and my sister and I were like yeah um, I don't know her aunt's name but she, she was up late, she came running out of the bathroom laughing and Alicia kind of was like, what, what was she wearing, what did she look like? And we described exactly what she was wearing, what she looked like, and we didn't think twice about it. Well, years later, uh, Alicia ended up telling us that nobody was there, um, it was just us girls and Alicia and her husband, and her aunt wasn't there, there was no other adult women there, and who we had described was, I guess, the girl that has kind of been haunting their house for, you know, however long. So, Bree and her family went through multiple different experiences with this house. I mean, multiple. I've, I've heard them talk, I mean, I could listen to them talk about it for days. And to start off, there used to be a staircase that was located underneath Bree's old bedroom. Um, that was taken out when the house was renovated to build a bathroom, I believe. 
Um, even though there was no longer staircases anymore, Brie at times could hear heavy boots just walking up and down the stairs. So side note, for all these stories, I did talk to Brie and I made sure that I was remember them, remembering them correctly. Um, and I wasn't just like making shit up in my head because shit, over the years, you never fucking know what you're doing. So another instance was when they bought the house or sometime later, I'm not exactly sure how long, but Alicia had found uh, a porcelain doll, an old antique porcelain doll in their, in their attic. So first of all, Alicia, <laughs> that's a little scary. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that's just me but she collected antique things and she liked all the old stuff so to her it was like a treasure it was a good find it was something she could put on display so that's what she did she put it on display downstairs on top of like a high shelf of some sort um, because I mean it was historic you know it was from the house she knew it was an old school house so she put it up there I believe the story goes that Alicia or Paul or one of them heard giggling and laughing at some point during the middle of the night and came out to the entryway where the porcelain doll was sitting on top of the shelf, which was way up high. And when they came out, the porcelain doll was sitting on the ground, just sitting. Not broken, just sitting straight up. So let's back up really quick. So I believe that there was two different spirits that were kind of haunting that house. Um, I believe there was an older lady who was more like a caretaker, an overseer, she was like caring. And then I believe there was a little girl, and I think the little girl was kind of trying, she just wanted to play, but still wanted to like stir shit up. So I believe the little girl was the one who wanted to play with the porcelain doll, and I, I feel like it was the, the adult woman that ran from the bathroom, because I remember her being older. Um, then Brie told me one night her and her sister had been fighting and when they walked into the kitchen Every drawer and every cupboard was just open um, Another instance her and her sister were sleeping in the living room and at some point the silverware drawer started to open and shut and All the silverware in the silverware drawer just started shaking is anyone else getting is this is this a lot? It's a lot uh, Maybe I shouldn't be talking about this with the fucking lights off, huh? Another instance, Brie was laying on the ground with her feet propped up on the door, just just chilling, hanging out. Um, when the doorknob started to shake, the door started to push open. So naturally, her first reaction was to kick it shut, but then when she kicked it shut, it pushed back open again. So at that point, I think she thought like, oh, there must be somebody out there instead. Um, and when she went out there, there was nobody out there. Um, this one kind of fucks me up a little bit. And I remember Brie telling us this a while ago. Um, so one night, her and her sister had been playing dress up and there were clothes everywhere all over the ground. Dress up clothes just scattered. Uh, they ended up going to bed that night and um, she woke up because she felt a presence. She felt like, ugh, God, I'm getting like, mm. The word presence just really fucks with you, doesn't it? She woke up because she felt a presence. Somebody was looking at her. Or maybe it was her sister, Brittany. One of the two. I don't know. She saw some sort of figure stand there in front of her just kind of looking at her. So she, you know, they were, I guess they had bunk beds and she kind of backwards crawled her way up to the top to see if Brittany was up there and she wasn't so she kind of backwards crawled back down and Brittany was actually had been like laying next to her I guess and she just kind of as a child just kind of tried to close her eyes and go to sleep even though she you know saw something standing there so the next morning she woke up so there had been a path where some sort of something had walked through and if that's not all proof enough for you, um, they actually redid their basement. So it wasn't, their basement wasn't always done. And so they were taking before and after pictures. And in one of the pictures, it was either the before or the after picture, there is a woman clear as day standing like next to a beam in their basement. Um, I asked Brie for the picture. It's actually in their storage unit somewhere deep down. Um, I didn't give them any time. <laughs> So you're just gonna have to trust me on this. Their house has been listed in a book. It's called Ghost Stories of Minnesota. Their house is actually no longer haunted. They did have a priest come and bless it. And after that, they didn't have any issues after that. Their family still lives in the house. Um, but like I mentioned before, 
none of the spirits were evil. Like, they fucked with them, and they scared the shit out of them. And, like, coming from an outsider's point of view, like, I'm like, hell nah. But it was not, n never, nobody was ever hurt, nobody's ever touched. It was just kind of, you know, it was just another another energy, another thing that, you know, they weren't ready to leave yet, and someone had to give them their wings to set them off into wherever, you know? So I mentioned that um, another one of the personal stories happened to someone very close to me, and when I say very close to me, I mean that someone being Matt, which for me kind of says a lot, because Matt is a very no bullshit, not gullible, very straight to the point, cut dry human being. And so if, if he's the one that is relaying these stories to me, um, for me it's even more real because I'm like, holy shit, this, this stuff has to be real. <laughs> like, it has to be real. So his stories took place at his childhood house. So do you remember when I talked about the Bell Witch and the children complaining about their covers being ripped off of them? Yeah, well that happened to Matt. Um, so his covers got ripped off of him in the middle of the night and the next day he had a really weird unexplained scar. It was just on his arm, he didn't know what it was, and it was there, it was plain as day, and then the next day it just disappeared. That sounds crazy, I know it sounds fucking crazy, but that is what it is. I mean, what, what fucks me up there is that whatever that was touched him and made a mark on him. Um, and other times him and his brother would be playing hide and seek. His brother, on multiple occasions, would um, be in the closet and just start bawling and would always tell his parents, there's a witch, there's a witch, there's a witch in their house, and would explain the same person every time. And it was this older lady, um, and he called her a witch, but it was obviously, in, in my head, it was an older spirit of something. Um, there were other times where all the toys in their basement will all, would all just go off at once. They would just all start playing all at the same time, all their electric toys. Um, and to build on that, uh, their basement flooded, and so the, the family had to go stay, I, I don't know if they were staying in a hotel or wherever, but they were staying somewhere else. And uh, his dad went back to the house to kind of maybe shovel out some of the water or whatever. He was trying to fix some, some shit in the basement that was already flooded. I mean, it was flooded, like walking through water. And so all the toys were underwater. Well, while he was there by himself, all the toys started to go off at once underwater. And if that's not enough, um, whenever they were, so the basement seems like the hot spot. Um, if I were them, I would have stayed away from the, the basement, but apparently when they would be in the basement during the day, they would see a figure of some sort standing outside the basement window. And then at night, when they were sitting on the couch, they could see that same figure in the reflection of the window behind them. So that was the majority of their experiences, but then after they moved out of this house, um, nobody could stay in the house longer for a year. So they had people that they knew that lived on the block, and they would tell them that no other family that moved in would stay there longer for a year. So one of the people that moved in, I guess this guy moved in, um, he would always find his shoes filled with water. He'd find, wake up, find his shoes, and they'd be filled with fucking water. Then I, I guess the breaking point was at one point he woke up in the middle of the night and he was literally standing on the ledge of his of his like balcony on his porch. He was just standing. Like he had slept walked up onto the ledge of his porch. So... I'm sorry, that was fucked up. That was rude, wasn't it? So yeah, now that I've thoroughly scared the shit out of myself, now that I, I feel like I'm like opening doors. Like I feel like I'm like opening like communication and I don't like leave, leave me alone. This is not, this is for entertainment purposes only. I don't want it, I'm good. Like fucking give me the sage. Let me like sage the shit out of myself. Like I just, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're a little bit freaked out. I hope you're at least a tad scared because I sure as fuck am. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell uh, so you can get notified every time I post a new video. Um, go ahead and follow me on all my social medias. Um, my Instagram handle is this. This is also all my other social media handles as well. And yeah, see you guys next time. Thank you so much. Have a great week.